Hi, Russ from Florida Tube Amp here. I figured while I worked on this amp a little bit, I would talk about replacing capacitors and replacing tubes in your amplifier. Um, and, there, and there's really two different things to know about them. Let's start with the capacitors. The capacitors that you need to replace in your amp every so often are these guys right here. These are the electrolytic caps. And those caps, after about 10 or 15 years, will go bad. Um, they, will, they will tend to start to leak. Not all of them and not every time, but if you want your amp to be dependable, you've really got to replace this. If you have the older style, for example, this paper style, that means it's way older than 15 years and you need to replace it. Anyway, that would be if you have a, like a 60s fender amp or something. Um, and these caps, which are IC, are known to go bad after two or three years. So it's, it's always a good idea to um, replace them. All right, let's test a couple of capacitors and see if they're any good or not. This is my high voltage capacitor checker that I built, and it will allow me to check caps up to 400 volts. We can see the current here that's running into a cap. And when we hook a cap up, it should charge up fully because they, they actually work kind of like a battery and then once it's charged it should stop pulling amperage so this should drop back down to zero if it doesn't drop back down to zero the cap is leaking and it's passing DC to the rest of the circuit and that can cause buzzing it can cause the bias to be off in your amp all kinds of headaches so that's why one of the reasons we replace caps so this is a brand new FNT capacitor and we're going to start by checking a new one to show you how a cap should behave. You can see that it is dropping slowly down to zero here. And I can speed that dropping up. But you can see that it goes right to zero as it should, so it's doing its job. Let's test one that's not so good. This is one of those paper Mallory's that came out of a 60's Fender amp. And I have not really tested this one, but I'm about 100% sure it's going to be bad just because of its age. So we put a charge on it. We run it all the way up to where we just ran the other one. We watched it drop to zero. We tap on it and we can see this one is not discharging. So this cap is bad. Unlike capacitors, tubes don't need to be replaced unless they're bad. And really the only way to find out if they're bad or not is to test them on a good tube tester. This is my tube tester. It's a Hickok 539C. It's one of the best tube testers ever made. This guy's from the late 60s. And we'll plug a tube into it here and it has to warm up for a few minutes just like it does in your amp and there are other settings that I have to adjust and the first thing we'll do is check it for shorts we're looking to see if a light lights up right there and it's not and then we watch for the needle to move here and the tube is clean and has no shorts and it's probably about warmed up by now and we got to adjust this a little bit it's about right there see and that gives me 1200 micro ohms she's in the second scale here that's got the 1000 2000 3000 and this is a 12 ax7 which minimum or 65 percent is 875 and it's up around 1200 so this tube is not testing new but it is still testing very good and could give years of service still Okay, here's that amp recapped. I took the back off and completely resoldered all the bad connections. It did have a couple of some cold solder joints. Uh, we have F and T's here. We have um, rubies here because they didn't make F and T's in that size. FT here and here, and here we have Nichicons because 
that's the size that was required there and some Panasonics but very nice caps um, I did test the tubes as I showed earlier on my um, Hitchcock tube tester and these three tubes were bad so we replaced them these tubes are perfect there is a real joy to uh, working on one of these guys and just hearing them come back to life. Mm -hmm.